Hi, Gary Stearman. It's a Monday. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily update. Recently, and many of you have seen the updates in which we interviewed Lieutenant Colonel Steve Russell. This is his book entitled, We Got Him. It's an account as said to be the most accurate account of the capture of Saddam Hussein ever put on paper. And uh, we really love to talk to uh, Colonel Russell because he, he was right in the middle of the fray in Iraq uh, when it came time to draw that whole uh, situation down to a conclusion with the capture of uh, Saddam Hussein. And by the way, uh, Colonel Russell is a great Christian gentleman. He, his faith is strong, and I'm sure that had a great deal to do with, uh, with our success <clears throat> in the Middle East. Now... Uh, after that interview, we've had a few emails from people saying, uh, your interview with Colonel Russell has caused me to kind of search my soul. What are we doing in the Middle East anyway? Do we have any right to take troops into the Middle East? And, and, and if they're there, should we as Christians be supporting them? Uh, here's a typical uh, email. Uh, and I'm reading this email. I've loved the magazine and now the show and the website for many years. Lately, I've been having concerns about the pro-war, pro-Zionist stance that the show has taken. Of course, uh, I don't know that we're pro-war. Uh, the war is going on, and, and uh, it, since the war is supported by America and we are American citizens, I think we would support that war. But uh, this writer says, pro-war and pro-Zionist stance. And for reasons that I'll be talking about in a moment, yes, indeed, we are pro-Zionist. Uh, I am somewhat confused. I know we all, both Jew and Gen Gentile, are equal in Christ, but much of what's going on in Israel is being done outside of any faith. And so the writer of this letter says, I'm confused. Uh, I'm really confused about what seems to be the moral uh, basis, the ethical basis of uh, becoming involved in a war in the Middle East. Next sentence says, as to the Middle East, it's always been a dangerous place. The only difference is that we're sticking our noses into the fray, as did many empires before us. Is this what we as believers need to be honoring? Uh, and the, then the closing sentence, the episode on We Got Him, is what, what really started me wondering. And so uh, when we interviewed uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Russell about his book, We Got Him, uh, which, by the way, is written from a very powerful Christian perspective, and, and, and it's a good read. But it caused this uh, writer to ask the question, do we really need to be involved over there? Um, uh, is this what we as believers need to be honoring? Well, first of all, let's talk about a pro-Zionist stance. Uh, and I'm reading from Psalm 87. And it begins, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The individual being referred to here is uh, the Lord, or ultimately the Messiah. His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of, of Jacob. Well, you know where the gates of Zion are. They are around the Temple Mount in downtown Jerusalem. And, and so that when it says the Lord loves the gates of Zion <clears throat> more than all the dwellings of Jacob, that means that's, that's his number one uh, geographic spot on planet Earth. And, of course, that's between him and Israel. And, and you could still ask the question, what are we doing there supporting Zion? Uh, verse uh, Three says, glorious things are spoken of the O city of God. And it goes on to extol the virtues of Zion. And, and you might still ask the question, why are our troops in the Middle East? Uh, is that a legitimate uh, placing of our strategic forces? And the only way I have to answer this is by going to the New Testament. <clears throat> and the Apostle Paul in Romans 11, when he asks the famous question in verse 1, I say, hath God cast away his people? He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. And then he says, God forbid, for I 
also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. And so that's Paul's premise. A lot of people say that the Jews, having rejected Messiah, have been forever cast aside, and Paul takes a decidedly different viewpoint. No, they haven't been cast away. And then he goes on to expand on that idea in uh, Romans 11, 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall is our salvation is come to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And so it was through Israel's fall that salvation came to the Gentiles. We're talking here about a, a plan of God, a, a long-term uh, situation in which the Lord is working out a plan, the plan of salvation. Uh, verse 12 says, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle, an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. And then he comes to what I consider to be an amazing and a pertinent statement, pertinent to this conversation today. Uh, verse 14 says, If by any means I may provoke to uh, jealousy, them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? And so the casting away of national Israel was not a permanent curse on that nation. The casting away of the 12 tribes is called the reconciling of the world. In other words, this was God's long-term plan. And so we cannot throw the Jews away. And by the way, I might add that, that replacement theology is, uh, is very, a very powerful thought among many churches today. The, the idea being that uh, God has cast Israel away permanently because of Israel's sin and that Israel's place has been taken over by the church. The people in Israel today, therefore, would be irrelevant. Uh, they would be there outside of God's law, and we shouldn't really go to any lengths to support them because their tenure there will be temporary. I take the view that they have returned as prophesied. They have been regathered in preparation for the return of Christ and the setting up of the kingdom in which Israel will be the head of the nations. Now, uh, Romans 11 goes on to say <clears throat> in verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles uh, be come in, and so... All Israel shall be saved, and as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. And so Paul spends the 11th chapter of Romans uh, outlining God's plan for Israel. Uh, should we turn our back on Israel and the, the very dramatic situations that surround Israel in the Middle East? I think not, and it, and it seems providential to me that our forces have gathered in the Middle East to protect Latter-day Israel. You may remember uh, they came back to their land after the 1917 Balfour Declaration and after the, the uh, World War II Holocaust uh, in which uh, the world sadly and belatedly recognized that the Jews had been persecuted beyond measure, and it, the world's heart was opened uh, for a brief time, allowing the Jews to return. And providentially, uh, the United States' power uh, extended into the Middle East has made it possible for Zion to become a reality. Should we support Zion? Well, that was the question in this email. <clears throat> Is this what we as believers need to be honoring? Yeah, I think so. I think we are doing a good work, a biblical work, and 
it's based upon God's plan for Israel, which is that Israel is going to rise again out of the ashes and become head of the nations. Well, I could say a lot more, and I'm sure this will precipitate a lot of discussion, uh, but that's the way it is in these latter days. A lot happening, a lot to talk about. Keep looking up, everybody, because he's coming soon.